as in my early lecture i uh, said that every fluid is uh, a fluid consists of molecules and molecules are moving so they they always exert a pressure on the walls of the container here's an example of fluid exerting pressure because of its weight not because of the molecules moving in random direction but because of its weight and uh, that is and uh, that is atmospheric pressure that uh, you are feeling right now while listening to this lecture uh, watching this lecture you are under the atmospheric pressure right now what is atmospheric pressure if this is our earth these are the rings of different kinds of gases that form our atmosphere heavy gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide are form, uh, found very close to the surface and then lighter gases like hydrogen and uh, like um, helium they are in the medium medium part of the uh, atmosphere and on the extreme outer boundary we have ozone and and um, very light weight gases over there so all this this medium let let's consider this point over here let me name this point let's let's call this point p this point p can be a person you me or anybody or any object it is in the atmosphere so this portion of atmosphere is pulled by the gravity downward in in the downward direction and uh, because of its weight it should be exerting a pressure on this point p if somebody asks you how much this pressure is a simple answer is because it is a pressure of fluid so pressure on p will be rho g h regardless like it is it is difficult to find out this rho because from this point to this point there is no one rho acting on you as pressure uh, as, as atmosphere's density density changes heavy gases uh, having more density are over here as oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide and and as we go up the density of the atmosphere changes actually decreases as we go uh, away from the surface of earth so it is not possible to find one rho g is also a question mark because as we go away from the surface of earth so so much distance like we we are going to the extreme end of the atmosphere the value of g should also not be constant height again it is an issue because it will be very difficult to find exact height of the atmosphere it is it is difficult to measure the height of atmosphere so that that this formula this this one is exactly 100% right that pressure equals to rho g and h if we know rho and g and h we can find pressure exerted by gas if we go to hilly area i i made hill on the side to to clear the concept that we should not always consider ourselves over here we can be here or here or here or here or anywhere on the globe actually here as well because this is um, the top of the sphere right now for example if there is a person this they, let's name this person or this point as as q point it will be under under the effect of this pressure but how do you compare the pressure of p with pressure of q because there is a lesser height on q of atmosphere because of q being on the top of a hill where this thing is a hill as as q is on the top of a hill there is a lesser atmosphere on the top of q hence the q will be experiencing less pressure as compared to p and this is why we, we as we go into hilly areas we experience uh, lack of pressure and this lack of pressure is something that you also experience when the plane takes off or lands because it it goes higher in the atmosphere and there is a lesser atmosphere on the top of the plane so the pressure atmospheric pressure decreases and you can experience that with your uh, with the trouble in your uh, ears okay so that is also a consequence of change of pressure 
Now, how much is this pressure? This is a very good question. You should be now thinking, how much is this pressure? As I said, the density is not same. It is not one value from here to here. G is not same because as we are going far, far away from the surface of Earth, the G will definitely get affected. A small effect, but it will be there. Height is, it is not possible to find one single height of, of atmosphere. How high is the last molecule of atmosphere from the surface of Earth? That is very difficult. So this method, although this, this is a formula, it is a formula. This one is a formula to find pressure. But I don't see this formula being used to measure atmospheric pressure in this way. We will be using the same formula, but in a different way. But I do not see this formula be used in this way to find atmospheric pressure. Somebody came up with a very cool, very simple idea to find atmospheric pressure. Okay. So I, I will be drawing the diagram for um, that apparatus that was used to measure atmospheric pressure in a, in a second. Okay. Here we go. This is the apparatus that we will be using to find atmospheric pressure. Very simple. It is a large tray as uh, over here. Uh, it is a tray, transparent tray, and it is filled with some mercury. And there is some space for more mercury as well. So if if we put some more mercury, it it can accommodate that as well because um, the tray is bigger than the mercury it is filled with. On the right side of the screen, you can see a long test tube. It is a glass test tube and it is about one meter high. How big is a meter? So if you're an average height person and you stand up, it is from uh, ground to your um, stomach. This, this is how high it might be. A little shorter, a little bigger than that, but approximately it will be that high. If you're standing on the floor, it is from the floor to the belly of your uh, body. Now. Okay, this test tube is used, uh, is, is also filled with the mercury. Mercury is a very heavy liquid, heaviest actually we can find around. So we fill this test tube with mercury to, to, to the maximum possible uh, level. And then we invert this one into this one. This is the open end of the test tube. This is the closed end of the test tube. So what we do is we lower this open end over here without letting any mercury come out. We, we can put a lid over here, a temporary lid, and then we can invert it into the, the tray and remove the lid. So once we put it in, in there, what happens? Let's see. This is the test tube. We invert it upside down like that and now we lower it over here let me make it vertical okay now it is vertical and I put it like this so what happens is now there is mercury inside and because of the height of the mercury, mercury exerts a downward pressure, which is equal to rho gh. And over here, it is atmosphere. This, this is atmosphere. And atmosphere is exerting a pressure in the downward direction over here. The atmosphere is exerting pressure like this. So atmosphere is pushing this mercury to go into the test tube. Whereas this pressure is... Of, of the mercury is trying to come out. So this is happening. This is a competition between this pressure of mercury in the tube with this atmospheric pressure. So who will win? What happens is the mercury in the tube starts to come down. Now, as you see, the mercury starts to come down because the pressure of the mercury was definitely more than atmospheric pressure. But 
at a certain height it stopped coming down further isn't that strange why this liquid is not trying to come out over here the reason is simple the pressure that this mercury is now exerting to to come out is equal to the pressure that atmosphere is exerting and pushing the mercury to go in so neither of them is winning now why because they have become equal to one another and as uh, mercury goes down one very important thing for this portion of the test tube as you can see it is th there is nothing over here nothing it is vacuum actually that is the definition of vacuum as well absence of matter is called vacuum this is man made very close to 100% vacuum why did i say very close to 100% what can be over here it can't be air because it it was filled with mercury and now the mercury has gone down only some vapors of mercury can be present over here some vapors mercury vapors can be over here other than that no matter so this place is very close to 100% vacuum and it is actually the closest to 100% vacuum that human ever Uh, produced now this liquid this one from the top of the surface over here to the top of the meniscus over here did you notice the convex meniscus mercury is making mercury always makes a convex convex um, meniscus and the reason is it is uh, having strong cohesive forces as compared to adhesive forces Now how can we use this apparatus to find atmospheric pressure ideas okay we use the same rho gh formula but in a different way i will draw some some dimension lines over here and then quantities that we need to measure to find atmospheric pressure okay for measuring atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure equals to pressure due to liquid in tube why we came up with this equation because when the apparatus was uh, let to rest in a lab for days the level of mercury neither went up nor down so what we can conclude from here we can conclude that the pressure that this liquid is exerting in the downward direction is same as atmospheric pressure outward so the the pressure with which the liquid wants to come out is balanced by the pressure of atmosphere with which the liquid go, wants to go in and because these two pressures are equal we can consider this so now to find atmospheric pressure all we need is this height and i think it is very easy to use a scale to find this height because we need height of the top of the surface over here from the top of the surface over here so all we need to do is rho gh and that will give us atmospheric pressure let's give a symbol of p nod for atmospheric pressure and this will be used from here as afterwards is atmospheric pressure the density that we use uh, mercury and the density of mercury is 13600 kg per meter cube actually it is 13590 kg per meter cube but we can approximate it to 13600 kg per meter cube height that when this experiment is done on uh, um, sea level the height is 760 mm of ag this is also used as a um, scale of pressure millimeter of ag 
now in meters it will be 0 0.76 meter and gravitational acceleration as this experiment is very close to the surface of earth there will be no variation in the value of g and it will be 10 meter per second square so if we use this we, we can see that the p naught will be rho g h which will be 13600 multiply by 0 0.76 multiply by 10 my calculator is giving me 103,360 pascal which can be round off to 103 kilopascal but the standard pressure value that we consider for uh, pressure of atmosphere is approximately 100 kilopascals it, 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 the calculations say they are 103 kilopascal but that is very close to 100 kilopascal so we consider atmospheric pressure to be 100 kilopascal and if you have to state the value of atmospheric pressure somewhere you will state 100 kilopascals or 100 uh, thousand pascals this apparatus has a name this this thing is called barometer barometer is a device that is used to measure atmospheric pressure so this whole apparatus is called a barometer thank you very much for watching